DroneCon, day one, DroneCon 2018, we're in Johannesburg in South Africa. This is allegedly Africa's largest drone conference, and judging by the ones I've been to so far, it is. Uh, and it's not very big uh, by international standards, but it's good enough. First thing that's caught my eye is young Matthew here, and, 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 and this thing, and I've already ribbed him. I've ribbed him because it uses ductive fans, and I hate ductive fans, and as ever, I'm completely wrong about a thing. And um, and the many reasons, one of the many reasons I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about it, uh, is that it is a blown wing. Now, Matthew, your company is called Passerine. Yes. You're a Y Combinator. Alumni, yes. Yeah, alumni. Uh, so San Francisco and Johannesburg. Yes. That's pretty impressive. So why did you leave um, San Francisco to come back here? Well, I actually left here to go to San Francisco. Yeah. Launch the company. And came back here uh, because we've got world-class engineers in South Africa, and they don't ask San Francisco prices for their work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a very good answer. Now, run me through this airplane. Okay, yes. so we've said Dr. Fan blow wing. We'll talk yes. about that in a minute. But the elephant in the room, or the feet in the room, are these feet here. Yes. It takes off like a bird. That's right. Yeah. So what we have here is what we're calling passerine drone. It takes on lands like a bird. So it's a fixed wing airplane, no compromises, can fly a long way, can fly for a long time, can fly at a high speed, but requires no ground infrastructure whatsoever to take off. No runway, no catapult. What we have are robotic legs. What these do, it allows the airplane to jump into the air and start flying. When it lands, it does a deep stall or a flare, same as a bird does, and can land back on a spot. The legs absorb the energy. Okay, so they're they're just there to, to take the exactly. spring and exactly. do they move independently? Yes. So can it? Yes. So if there's a bit of a slope or something, will I get Correct. away with that? Correct. Yes. And and we're going to hit the bird on the wire sort of a thing. Yeah, that's the uh, the long term goal. At the moment, it's landing on the ground. Uh, it's a uh, coming in, landing on a spot, and uh, primarily looking at more rural areas where it's going to be operating, where you don't have any infrastructure, but you have occasional spots of ground that you can land on. Well, immediately it has the shape of being a car drone. Correct. Immediately. So th th this, this one that we have on display is in the configuration of a cargo drone. It would be carrying around two kilograms of payload, roughly an hour of flight. We are looking at different modules that you would place either on the front or on the belly, which would be for GIS survey, or geographical surveying, or infrastructure monitoring, flying along pipelines or power lines, checking for faults. So when it does its leap launch, as it were, or whatever you want to call it, has, have you got a, a distance to clear an object? So a height. Yeah. So the launch goes at around 30 degrees so you need a 30 degree climb out angle so if you are trying to clear a five meter obstacle you're going to need a 10 meter distance from it. I think this is the only time I've ever seen landing gear like this. You must be trying to patent this like billiard. Yeah so our landing gear we have filed for a patent and yeah we, we're already on that. Can we have a look at the, if you don't mind, which is not too much of a secret, explain the blown wing concept to me and maybe we can look at those legs as yeah, well. Sure. On the blown wing we have our ducted fan above, above the wing which is being ducted down into a sheet of air. That sheet of air gets forced onto the flap which allows you to generate a lot more powered lift. It allows the drone to fly a lot slower and it allows us to do our very short takeoff uh, with the legs. The advantage of doing it like this is it's very simple. All we have is a motor mounted above the wing with a duct and a smooth flap surface and we can get very high powered lift out of the design. So I suppose an advantage there as well is in, in having a tea towel you've yes. kept that off the ground these are higher off the ground. Correct. Um, so course, you're, you're, yes. you're it, keeping stuff away in yeah. that improvised landing area. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's the um, secondary reason for doing it is just for robustness. You don't want your motors near the ground. You don't want to be breaking propellers. Part of the reason why we have shrouded uh, fans, and then T tail get it off the off the ground. This T tail is all moving, okay. uh, which is primarily for our stall. So uh, so is that is that trim then on the don't is that so, trim then on the all moving? So all moving is just for our our landing just for the primarily. Stall, yeah, um, the elevator is what you can. Move. So are you, I believe you're using RG plane top marks for that. Yeah. Are you using the deep stall landing that uh, comes with that? We are looking at it, yes. Uh, it is 
a work in progress getting that manoeuvre fully automated. So is this, uh, I, I've got to say it because Philip Rails will have a go at me if I don't ask, I, I can see that over there you've got yes. a, a, a two point, a cube in, yes. uh, in that, um, I forgot what they're called. It's a stick. Stick, that's <laughs> it, I like those as well. Um, is it 2.1 in here or just a Yes, just this, this is also flying on 2.1. Uh, yeah. Wow, it, how did you, it's an obvious question, but how did you come up with this idea? Why did you throw away convention, as it were, to arrive right. at this? So, aeronautical engineer by training, Basically, we know drones need to be able to fly further, fly for a longer amount of time to do a lot of missions people are looking to do with them. That means a fixed wing drone. That generally means a catapult or a runway. We looked at how we can get around not doing that. And birds happened to do that exact mission. That was a perfect inspiration, a bit of research and a bit of development. Um, interesting thing, our legs didn't start off looking like birds' legs. As we iterated them, they got progressively closer and closer to a bird's leg. So, um, so it just and it ended up, yeah. The biomimicry nature. is just yeah. incredible. Yeah. Does this mean this can? I'd like to have a look at those legs in a minute. Immediately, what's coming to mind is: can this scale? Will you hit a weight where you can no longer make the legs work? Yes. So there will, there will almost certainly be a weight where they won't work. We've only done calculations up to a 350 kilogram aircraft, oh, okay. so something to carry 100 that's a, kilograms that's of payload. Tidy old thing. So, and yeah, I presume once you hit that stage, you'll have turbines up there. Then you'll the the Then idea. your efficiency will start. Yeah, that, that, that back would up be again. that would be the idea. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Let's have a look at the legs. Show yeah. me the legs. Tell me about the legs. But basically, it's a mechanical linkage system uh, that is, is a carbon fiber system that you can then store energy and release it very rapidly. So the entire jump takes around 0.2 seconds from standing still to the airplane flying. Uh, what it does is it stores the energy in a spring, essentially, uh, that it then can release for the launch. Uh, during flight, I'm just going to move these manually. The legs can retract up to be flush with the fuselage. There is a fairing being designed so it tucks up completely. You have no negative drag effects uh, from... So it's from not, not like some of the VTOLs that we're seeing Correct. that have, have passengers along. Correct. Passengers Correct. Correct. That's, the, that's the big advantage you have on this as opposed to something that has a quadcopter strapped to the top of it. Yeah. 